When Goethe, in his search for general rules governing the appearance of colour in nature, came across the prismatic colours, he thought he had found what he was looking for. His observations boiled down to four types of colour spectra, which taken together supply material for a complete colour system with promising features, such as complementarity and polarity, and where each colour gets its proper place between white and black. When he presented his finding to contemporary physicists, they told him that these spectra were well known and explainable in terms of Newton's theory of rays of different refrangibility. They apparently didn't see the possibility of the color system Goethe had in mind, which is a shame because it is a beautiful piece of theory, even from a purely physical point of view. Let me repair their mistake and give due credit to Goethe by presenting the system of ideal colors he anticipated. Let me remind you of Goethe's procedure. He studied black and white pictures through a prism under ordinary daylight conditions. Looking, for instance, at a black square on a white background, holding the prism horizontally, he saw this. At the upper and lower boundaries, there appear spectra a blue and a yellow one, respectively. Looking instead at a white square on black ground, you get the inverse image, with yellow and red at the upper boundary and cyan and blue at the lower. Always the same transition between black and white, the passage from light to darkness. If you look at a sufficiently narrow black stripe, the black in the middle disappears and instead a purple color appears. And in the inverse case, with a thin white strip on black, green. In order to analyze these spectral images in detail, we may consider the visual situation. A person looking through a prism at an image on the wall and apply geometrical optics, including Newton's concept of rays of different refrangibility. Looking through a prism at a white wall, you see no colors. To Goethe's astonishment in the first run, any point on the diffusely reflecting surface reflects light rays in various directions, some of which arrive at the pupil of the eye of the observer, along his line of gaze. Rays of different refrangibility then come from different spots on the wall, but they all join along the sight ray thus making up the full spectrum of white, that is, uncolored light. But in the vicinity of a black area, it may happen that blue type of rays cannot reach the eye along this line of sight, but still green and red rays are available, so the impression will be yellow. Closer to the black area, even green light rays are unavailable. Only red remain. In the case of a narrow stripe of black on the white wall, it happens for a particular line of sight that there are no green rays available from the reflection at the white surrounding area with the result that a superposition of red and blue light appears in the direction of this line of sight, appearing as a purple color 
for instance, magenta. Let me now illustrate how this modulation of the white illumination proceeds along any of these spectral images. I will use a Newtonian spectrum to illustrate the spectral composition of the light reaching the eye and the illumination itself is the full spectrum as you see here. Going now from white to black, we successively cut away more and more of the rays, starting with those of greatest refrangibility. The similar is true for the blue boundary spectrum, but in this case we cut away more and more from the red side, i.e. the rays of least refrangibility. Observe that to each color in the yellow boundary spectrum there is a corresponding color in the blue boundary spectrum. They are additive complementaries since superimposed they constitute the full spectrum. When it comes to the spectral image with purple in the center the modulation rather consists in cutting away a part in the middle of the full spectrum a part that can be more or less wide, resulting in purples of various lightness and saturation. The complementary light, given by the darkened area in the middle of the full spectrum, turns out as variants of green. What have we done so far? By expressing the boundary spectra in terms of spectral compositions, we have taken Goethe's investigation a step further. The analysis helps us to design an optical device, a so-called spectral integrator, by help of which we can dive into each of the spectra experience it in detail and follow the lawful transformation of you typical for each kind. By help of this device, individual ideal colors can be visually compared with colors produced by other means, for instance by help of color filters, colored solutions or reflecting pigmented surfaces. The geometry of the setup is like this. As light souls, I use a low voltage incandescent lamp. Slit S1 is projected as a sharp spectrum at S3. And the opening S2 is projected as a homogeneously illuminated image on screen S4. To begin with white, with sliding screens at S3, you can cut away more or less of the spectrum from the short wave side as well as from the long wave side, thus producing single colors from the boundary spectra as well as from any central part of the full spectrum. An improvement is to make the screens out of plexiglass in the shape of thin prisms, so that the light cut away is not absorbed but redirected and separately displayed, which means that you always see the complementary pairs of colors, being the two halves into which the original white light is cleaved. In the particular setup I once constructed, the crucial component at S3 looks as follows. The spectrum is projected onto the transparent thin prisms, for instance like this leading to a double image on the screen, in this case looking somewhat like this. Observe that the spectral integrator 
shows us that colors come in pairs. Any possible color has its complementary, simply because they are the two parts into which the original full-spectrum light has been divided. Consequently, they do not have any wavelength in common. They are strictly complementary. This way of displaying ideal colors is preferable, namely as an image containing both the two colors belonging together and the white reference. This to avoid the trap of the dark chamber. Presenting only a green spot in dark surround would not give sufficient information to the perceptual system for the observer to be able to identify the color in the sense of finding its place in the color system between the poles black and white. Playing with a spectral integrator you will take pleasure in being able to produce colors that are more brilliant, more saturated and bright than you ever saw on your computer screen. But what about ordinary, softer colors, such as olive green, brown or grey? You may have noted that there is no place for grey or any grayscale within the system of ideal colors. A perfect grey surface equally reflects all sorts of light only to less degree than a white surface does. When we speak about degrees of lightness, we are in the ordinary visual world of light and shade where chromatic colors appear as a secondary effect. Goethe made prismatic observations, including gray surfaces, in the design. He pointed out that the peculiarity of gray is that it contributes both light and darkness. It can play the role of white as well as the role of black in images let us look at how it turns out, visually. You recognize the boundary spectra, but the colors look slightly different. While gray has the role of black, it contributes an amount of whiteness. While it has the role of white, it contributes an amount of blackness to the boundary color. We may explore the issue with the help of the spectral integrator described above. As a matter of fact, this is very illustrative. As long as we move the slits in the horizontal direction, we are essentially in the realm of wavelengths. We may, however, include the intensity dimension by projecting the full spectrum slightly above the prism, like this, Doing this, we regulate the amount of light passing through the thin prisms. Then the direct light, in this case green, will contain a certain amount of full spectrum, i.e. whiteness. And the complementary field, purple, will be correspondingly darker by losing intensity. Goethe was, of course, well aware that paint based on pigments found in nature brings with it quite appreciable amounts of darkness relative to the corresponding ideal colors. These rather belong to the sky, as in this watercolor from his Italian journey. But he acknowledged that the system of ideal colors shows a general pattern valid for color appearance in all natural phenomena. For instance, the yellow boundary spectrum reminds us of the color change of the setting sun. In his Farbenlehre, Goethe preferred to refer to sunset 
as a fundamental color phenomenon rather than the artificial prismatic boundary spectrum. The sun image shows a more gradual change of view in correlation with a more profound darkening. When it comes to the lovely flower petals, their brilliant colors are mostly due to a strong absorption band at various positions within the visual range. Hence, their reflectances are quite like ideal colors. So, in conclusion, there are many more similarities between qualitative color appearance and objective physical conditions than the series of rainbow colors mostly referred to. Why didn't Newton and his followers pay due attention to this? Well, Newton in his time was working with a beam of sunlight in a dark chamber and with the primary aim to come to grips with the disturbing chromatic aberrations in optical instruments. It never crossed his mind that darkness could have a decisive role for object colors. Good to happen to begin by studying black and white pictures under ordinary daylight conditions. For him, light belongs to the visual process by which things and their properties become visible for us. The observation that colors exclusively appear at the border between black and white areas indicates that color is a contrast phenomenon where light and dark play equally important roles. This became evident for him under his experimental conditions. And since his aim was a general understanding of color, he took the structural features of the prismatic spectra seriously. When it comes to describing the physical conditions governing the multiplicity of colors in nature, Goethe was intuitively right in bringing up the issue of boundary colors. I will explore this a bit further in a forthcoming lecture.